Oh my god. Okay. Hello. Can you guys hear me yet? Probably. Yeah, I got it, thanks. All right, I'm getting us live here, hold on. It says I'm live. Let me go look at it. <laughs> it's always such a pain. All right, there we go. Hello. Can you guys hear me yet? All right, I gotta stop that. What's up? Dylan, Kurt, Keith. Where's all the goodies on the What do you mean where's all the goodies on the wall? Oh, I guess it is like this the orange thing is kind of huge now. Like I've started to realize like I had to make it kind of big to get the logo and then all the social channels in there, but it it really takes up most of the screen. Um they're there. You just can't see them. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. The wifey did the wall. Credit to the wife for that. She's pretty awesome. I'll take it. Why? Okay, please do that. It's so weird. The way that this that the software works is the chat really doesn't like it when I'm in the software. It wants me to be like on YouTube and then it like won't let me into the chat, which is awesome. All right, we're going to make it work. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. I know. <laughs> I'm definitely going to work on it, okay? I could probably just get rid of the orange thing because, like, I could just do this the whole time. What if I just did that? What if this was the whole stream just like that? It would be perfect. You missed the new wall? All right. Well, yeah, the wife handcrafted this. She also made this. That's pretty sweet. That's It's literally a piece of wood that she painted black. And then she has a cricket, cry cut, whatever the hell you call those things. And she printed a reverse sticker of my logo so that it was like cut out in the spots where the logo was. And then she painted white over that and then pulled the sticker off. And I was like, wow, you're more talented than me. Like you should have your own YouTube channel and be doing cricket stuff. And we'd be rich instead of me just wasting my time all the time. Just kidding. It's not a waste of time. I like doing it. It's not more than 30%. Yeah, Wilson from Home Improvement. At least you were at a brewery, though. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, I like the wall. I'm I'm a big fan of it. It makes me feel legit now. Like, I you guys have probably seen before, but uh, before it was literally like a box spring that I nailed and screwed pallet wood to because I didn't want to do something permanent to the wall. So it was like a box spring that I had sitting on a Tupperware container behind me leaning against the wall. That's what it used to be. So you want to call me cheap, you're absolutely right. I'm definitely cheap. So, all right, well, let's dive into it. So everybody's here. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you. I lost all of my stuff because I closed it. Cool. Okay, there we go. All right, so for those of you that are new and for those, well, for those of you that are normally here, sorry, because we're going to go through all of the normal stuff again anyways, because remember, people might watch this later. That's kind of the idea is that people will watch this later that have never seen this before. So I've got to run through all that stuff, even though it may be boring to you guys, so I apologize up front. Um, so if this is your first time listening, my name's Fletch. I'm the host of the show. I don't know if you want to call it a show, this YouTube channel uh, called All Things Overlanding. We talk about overlanding stuff, Xterra stuff, do-it-yourself mods, gear, all kinds of stuff. Just really anything to do with overlanding, hence the name All Things Overlanding. So welcome. Um, and then, as I kind of mentioned last week, I have managed to build some relationships with some companies, and I'm really excited about those relationships. And I, I recently reached out to all of them because... I've seen some really awesome results. So thank you to you guys, especially you guys that are always on here because I'm sure a lot of it's you guys, but clicking through those links below, going and checking out, you know, those brands. They are awesome little like small companies that I know personally. So it does really help me out and I really appreciate it. Um, but so let's just run through them really quick. So last US bag, awesome, awesome gear, awesome bags. Um, I run a lot of their stuff. I really love it. The company is awesome. They're trying to reduce their waste. They're on the West Coast. Um, they do a lot of really cool stuff. 
So definitely down below in the link or down below in the link, down below in the description is a link to last US bags. If you're looking for anything like storage wise for your overlanding stuff, check them out. Uh, click on that link below. Next, more Overland Expo takes place next February um, 2021, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to that. I've got plans. I've marked it down on my calendar. I'm going. So if any of you guys want to go, that would be awesome. I'd love to meet you in person. But planning to be there. Again, the link down below. I've got something in my eye. It's probably metal from last time I grinded on the truck. Not sexually grinded with an angle grinder. That came out wrong. Um, anyways... Go down in the, to the link in the description below for more Overland Expo. They are still yet to open up ticket sales, but they have a Facebook thing where you can pre-register, so you'll be notified when they do open that up. And then last but not least, Cindy Pope, Northology Adventures out of Wisconsin slash Michigan. She's technically out of Wisconsin, but I say Michigan all the time, and she probably hates me for it. But she has a free digital overlanding magazine that you can get by just going to the link below and then scrolling to the middle of the page and putting in your name and email. Um, she also does these cool events, so definitely check out her page, and you'll learn more about that. But so let's dive into it. So tonight we're going to be talking about rooftop tents, and there's a reason for this. Because I've spent a bunch of nights now in my do-it-yourself rooftop tent, and I have some thoughts. Um, I also wanted to change it up a little bit um, because I want to start with like news stuff, right? So to make it maybe hopefully a little bit more interesting for you guys uh, that are live on here with me, I wanted to sort of start with just like news. Like it could be anything from like Nissan news. It could be stuff like stuff that I just bought that I'm really excited about. It could be overlanding trips that I took, things like that. So I just want to kind of touch on it and kind of run through that stuff with you guys. Um, get your thoughts on it and things like that too. So I'm going to start by dropping a little tidbit and then letting you guys kind of talk in the comments below or below, beside, whatever, wherever they are for you um, so that you guys can start posting up about this and then I'll talk about some other cool stuff. But so Nissan has dropped a bunch of new vehicles. So if you're a Nissan guy in the chat or girl, um, post up and let me know what you think about them. Like there's still no Xterra, which kind of sucks. But there is the Terra, which I maybe might be okay. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. But I'm curious what you Nissan people think of the new Nissan lineup. I'm really excited about the Z, to be honest. Like, I haven't bought a new car in probably, like, 10 years, 8 years, something like that. And I kind of want to, like, lease one. I kind of I But I don't want to spend that much money, but I kind of do because it looks awesome. So post up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the new Nissan products. But then I will dive into other news as well. Um... I wanted to give a shout out to, so if you guys aren't familiar with this channel, you need to go check it out. They have like way more subscribers than me, like 20,000 plus, 25,000 plus, um, but it's called Wander Lost. So Wander, W-A-N-D-E-R, Lost, L-O-S-T, Wander Lost, uh, shoot, what's it, Overlanding? Wander Lost? Now I'm forgetting what it's called. That's bad. All right, I'm going to go look it up. Wanderlust Overlane, but it's Mark and Mary. They are just this awesome couple. Um, the reason I'm mentioning them is because Mark actually sent me a message tonight. And, you know, I've talked to him a few times. I don't think I've met him in person, but I've kind of, like, been involved with him in, like, online chats and stuff. Um, but he just uh, he sent me a message because of, if you guys saw the video where uh, Grant Will Banks of Arkansas Offroad and I broke down our top five sort of YouTube channels, I mentioned them in that because I love their channel. They're just super fun. Um, Wander Lost Overland. That's, that's what I thought. So it's Wander Lost Overland. Um, but I mentioned their channel in one of our videos that we did recently and he like actually watched it, which is crazy. Cause again, they have like 25,000 subscribers and, uh, he watched it and he sent me a message and just said, Hey, I was just saw your thing and I thought it was really awesome. And I appreciate you mentioning us and I hope we can meet up soon. So like, I'm kind of like a starstruck kid now. Like, I'm like, wow, these guys are really doing it and doing a great, uh, doing a great job. And, uh, and they reached out to me. So I thought that was really cool. So thanks to Mark for that and Mary. Um, and again, if you haven't checked out their channel, like I'm obsessed with it. They're Toyota people. They have an FJ Cruiser and a 4Runner, which is fine. Like, no, I'm not saying, ooh, that's bad. Um, but they they don't have anything Nissan, right? But still, like they have awesome tutorials for like DIY uh, drawer systems. They built their own like electrically pumped water jug like they build these super cool things they're super talented people so again thanks to mark for reaching out and uh, definitely go check them out um let's look at nissan stuff nissan x motion concept is that the one with the doors that like open gullwing i don't even remember if i've seen the x motion concept i'm gonna go search it i think that i oh yeah okay here we'll pull this up on the screen here let me get my screen on here for you I want to do. I want to talk about what Kurt's talking about. Yeah, the Navara is 
There's some cool concepts for Navarras that are bad, like in a good, bad, good, bad, like awesome. Uh, main monitor. Here we go. Cool. So yeah, this is the X motion. That thing, if that came out, I might have to get a new vehicle and I would feel really bad about overlanding it, but that thing is pretty rad. Ugh, yeah. Even if you're not a Nissan guy, you know what it kind of reminds me of though? It's kind of funny. Kind of reminds me of the new RAV4. Not going to lie. I mean, it's cooler. The wheels are cooler. Those will never make it to production. The taillights are rad. I love, is that a rooftop 10? I don't know what that is, but that would be cool. Probably just a little tiny, the tiniest roof rack ever. You can put three donuts in that. But dude, if they could just carry some of this design language over, I'm totally in. I think that's awesome. Um, so cool. So yeah, thanks, Kurt, for the suggestion of that. The Yeah, I agree, Dylan. I think that, that that thing is great. Like They have a lot of good stuff, though. That Navarra concept is really cool, too. Um, like the midnight or whatever it's called. I don't, this is now I'm diving into Dave Boyd's Nissan Nation podcasts territory. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, but yeah, they're just, man, they're so cool. Okay, good. Dylan, we're on the same page. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I agree though. That's, that's fantastic. Nissan, I mean, Nissan has so much potential. I just want them to be good again. I, it's been a while and the Xterra is so good and so underrated and no one talks about it. Um, so a couple more things of news. One other thing that I bought, and actually I will share it with you. Um, let me share my screen here. God, there's just, I have too many screens going on. People have asked, there's another screen up here. That's why I'm like this all the time. Sorry. Um, so I just bought a thing today and I'm really, really like overly excited, like too excited about it. I bought this thing. I bought like three of these. And thank you, Amazon, for having a very lenient return policy because I buy them and then like I change my mind and and then I buy another one and blah, blah, blah. But so I just bought this thing. Like I'm supposed to get it on the second, but I, I've i looked at it a lot. I've done a bunch of research on these. It's got great reviews, um, you know, a couple of 300 reviews with almost five stars. It just seems to have a ton of functionality. You know, I don't run a CPAP machine, but if I ever want to, that looks pretty comfortable and sweet. Um, but so, I mean, it's got two AC pure sign, uh, plugins. It's got a couple of USB, a USB C, which is a little weird to me, but that does seem to be the future. That's where everything's kind of going. And then of course the DC, which is nice. What I'm really looking at this for is because, so you guys know I have my solar setup. Um, but that battery, the battery that I have is a 35 amp hour battery. This is a 300 amp hour battery, um, with 298 watt hour. I'm sorry. Um, but so this thing is freaking cool and could charge my laptop seven to eight times. And that's my biggest problem is when I try and charge AC stuff, it just tanks the battery on the solar setup. So what I'm really thinking is using the solar setup to recharge this thing. And that way this would get me through like most of the day or most of the night. And then the next day I could plug it into the solar and just recharge it. Um, so I just bought this because, so the reason I bought this though, is because like literally for like 10 seconds, this thing was on a lightning deal for like 188 bucks. So like I literally clicked on it and it was like 80 some percent, uh, fulfilled and I bought it. And then like, by the time I completed my order, it was gone. And I was like, come on like that. I would have shared that with you guys, but it was already gone. Um, but so it's normally 270, which is kind of sweet. So I got it for like 190 bucks. So anyway, so I just bought that. I was kind of excited about it. I wanted to mention that to you because keep your eyes open. Like go, if, if you're looking for something like that, I would highly recommend that you set, like you throw it in your, uh, your list or something because that's what I did. And then it like sent me a message. Hey, this thing's on lightning deal. And I was like, like I just threw it in there like two days ago. So it's almost like they watch how many people throw this stuff in their cart and then they put it on lightning deal. So, all right. Yes, Ford dudes, the Bronco is cool. I will give you that. I will give you that. The, the new Bronco does look kind of cool. I I still have Ford concerns about it, right? Like, no offense, Kurt, but, like, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Like, I, it looks really cool until it won't start the next morning. All right, we just lost Kurt as a, as a subscriber, folks. I'm sorry, Kurt. Um, all right, let's catch up on the comments. It looks like Blade Runner, yes. Agreed. Um... RTT should be measured in donut capacity. Like if you had like a 400 donut rooftop tent, that would be pretty decent. I would take a 400 rooftop, 400 roof, 400 donut rooftop tent. That would be sweet. Um, Dylan says he's excited about the new Bronco. 
Hobotech. Will Prowse and Hobotech are YouTube channels that review solar chargers and tech and give honest reviews. That's good to know. Thanks, Keith. That's the next thing. The last thing on news was beer. Because every time everybody asks about it, so I was going to just make it a thing. Let's just talk about what we're drinking. So you guys post up and tell me what you're drinking. So I've just finished a, I should be sponsored by these guys, don't you think? A, a Juicy Haze IPA from New Belgium. I love them. Employee owned. It's good. I am currently drinking a local beer from downtown Indy. Um, these guys are great. They, they're they very like sort of small batch and stuff, but it's called Fountain Square Brewery. And it's called Hop for Teacher, which is pretty clever. I like that name. This was a pale ale, 5 or 6% ABV. <laughs> yes, Kurt. I don't actually hate on Ford. I just... So we've had... My wife and I have had like two Fords, and we had like all kinds of serious problems with both of them. I've got a neighbor or two that have had Fords, and they have all kinds of problems with them. And it's just... Like, there, I know that there are a ton, though, that go 200, 300,000 miles, right? Like, it's, in my opinion, it's a numbers game, right? It's just, that's, I've become a Japanese car person because I feel like their percentages are way higher, meaning quality-wise. Um, but there's nothing wrong with Fords. Like, you could totally pick up a Ford and get tons and tons of miles out of the thing, right? And it's not even like it's one out of every three or anything like that. It might be one out of every... 300 or something, but maybe a Toyota's one out of every thousand, right? So it's just, it's kind of a numbers game. All right, so St. Louis Arch says he's having a chat with Mr. Beam. Kurt likes the Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze. It is pretty good, and like 7.5% ABV. Like, that's that's in my sweet spot. Anywhere between like 7 and 10 is where I like to live. Um, yeah, the Ford Diesels are good. Um, all cars suck at some point. If it's got wheels, it's got problems. Yeah, I, I agree, right? That's exactly what I, I agree with you 100%. And that's, I don't want to cause hate either. Like, personally, I personally am a Japanese car person now. I've had a bunch of Chevys. I've had some Dodges. I've had some Fords. And I've had things that I liked about each of them. But then I just, if, at some point, you just have so many problems that you're like, I'm going to try something else. And then there are a lot of people that post up on the Nissan posts all the time on all the social channels. And I'm like, I bought an Altima and the CVT went out at 37,000 miles and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I mean, it's, it happens to all manufacturers. So I'm not. Yeah, kind of like women. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. So now that we've gotten sufficiently off track... We can talk about the main topic. So, again, tonight I kind of wanted to talk about rooftop tents for a, literally a selfish reason, and I apologize for that. But my reason is, so let's talk about, well, let's go through advantages of rooftop tents just in general first, and then we'll go through, like, the, the cons of rooftop tents. And then after that I'll dive into a little bit more about, like, my rooftop tent, my DIY rooftop tent, and my experience with that, and, like, why rooftop tents are maybe a good idea, but maybe you should buy one. I don't know. Like, I'm going to break down the truth. So, uh, yeah, let's get into that. So advantages, right? Like, I personally, and I've seen all of them, right? Yes, Kurt, I do want, I got, if Nissan prices were, aftermarket prices were Jeep prices, it would be the match made in heaven. But instead, I have to buy all my stuff used and cheap and, like, buy these crappy like weird brands of solar power generators you'll find out kurt i'll tell you it no i'm i'm fairly happy with my rooftop tent but i'm gonna get into it so um so but i want to talk about advantages of rooftop tents first because i do think and i would love to hear your guys thoughts on these too and we're gonna do advantages and then downsides right so um i want to hear from you guys on both of them because i know there are a lot of people that are like just avidly like yes pro rooftop tent i'll never go back i hate ground tents i hate cots i hate hammocks whatever the the thing may be and then there are some that go the other way right that are like god now that i have a rooftop tent i'm never going back or now that i i tried a rooftop tent and i hated it because i always had to level it and do all this you know whatever the case may be so i kind of came up with a list of advantages of rooftop tents but you guys post up in the comments and let me know if you guys have different thoughts um so the advantages of rooftop tents to me are I, I never really thought about it before because, I mean, I, I grew up in Indiana. Like, I've slept on the ground. I've never been attacked by coyotes. I've never been bitten by a snake. I mean, I've probably killed a handful of copperheads in my life as a kid because I was, you know, terrified of them. But, like, I've never been bitten by one. I, and I've messed around in the woods literally my whole life for, like, the last 30 years probably. Um, but now that I've been up on the roof, 
it's pretty nice. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, just from a security standpoint and from, like, a comfort standpoint, to not have to worry about waking up with, like, a giant bug on you or something, you know, like, I do like the idea of being up high. Um, I also like, especially on my rooftop tent, which is why I built it the way I did, easy setup and teardown. Like, with the gas struts on the side, um, if you guys watched, God, what was it, Tuesday's video, I think, where I did, like, the kind of full deployment of the, the vehicle, um, it is as simple as, I have. it takes me longer, literally, to undo the two locks that I put on the latches than it does to, to pop the two latches and push the thing up, and it's open. Like, that's all that there is to it. Um, I pop a, a ladder out of the back, and I extend it, and I lean it against the truck, and I'm done, which is amazing. Like, that's a huge advantage. And I even, before I had a Coleman instant up pop-up tent, right, like one of those that, it's like a, you know, like a laundry hamper, one of those foldable laundry hampers, and you just throw it up in the air and it explodes open and you lay it on a, you know, a footprint or a, a ground tarp and you're good to go. But still, then it rains, it gets wet, you got to fold it back up, it takes up room inside the rig, you've got your, you know, whatever kind of, you could use an air mattress, which those don't take up too much room. I use memory foam pads, which take up a ton of room. Um, your pillow, your cot, if you use one, which I used to use. Um, so it was really easy. It's way easier to set up my rooftop tent. Like that has been the most amazing thing about it is I pull up to the site, I pop a couple latches and push it up and I set up my awning and I'm ready to go for the whole night. So I will say easy setup and tear down is definitely an advantage. Um, let me go and catch up with you guys here. So yeah, Kurt knows that the, he thinks that the rooftop tent isn't making me happy. Dylan says beaten to hell used, right? What are you talking about? What do you mean, Dylan? Um, Mauro, hey, says the best thing of an RTT is it's always on your truck. Yeah, right. Yeah, and the worst thing is that it's always on your truck. That's true. You know, that's for me, it doesn't really bother me because I don't daily my truck anymore. So, like, if I'm driving it, I'm going to a place. But you're right, and that's one of the downsides I'll get into is weight up top, right, which kind of sucks, especially in dicey situations, off-roading. Um, Omega three says I'm looking to purchase the Smitty built gen two XL next month. I heard mixed reviews about it, but I think the upgrades from gen one are worth it. I think you're right. I mean, I've overall from the Smitty built stuff, that's legit what I've been looking at for like a year before I even built my own rooftop 10. I was looking at the gen one Smitty built and I, for the price, like I really, it makes me really question if it's worth spending two or three times as much on something so similar as like all the other brands that are, you know, like a 23 zero or, a, you know, like, are they really worth two or three grand more? A Tapui is similarly priced, I feel like. Um, and then Jim, hey, Jim, Jim says, anybody have any experience with the Alibaba rooftop tents? I, I don't know. I've heard bad things, but I don't have any experience. Um, Kurt says he likes the rooftop tent idea because speed and off the ground, but I can mitigate speed with a gazelle tent. Yep. See, those gazelle tents are nice, and for but they're still like 300 bucks, right? 280 bucks, which isn't bad, and it's still like half or a third of the price of even the cheapest like Smitty built tent, and you don't have to keep it on top of your truck, but it still takes up room inside, and for me, it's, it's the other stuff, right? Having all the other stuff, like, I think I'm just old and like fat now, like I just... I hate sleeping on the ground, so then I had a cot, and the cot's such a pain to set up, and you know, by the time you put your ground tarp down, Put your tent down, even an instant up one, like, okay, it's up. Then you got to bring your cot over from the truck. Then you got to bring your memory foam or your air mattress, whatever it is, put that in there. Then you got to put your sleeping bag. Then I get my wool blanket. Then I get my pillow. Like, it's it's just a whole thing versus, like, popping a couple latches and, like, everything's in there. And I just climb up and I go to sleep, especially if you're drinking beer. Um, <laughs> Dylan says, used items that you buy, use cheap. That's, I mean, I will not buy a new rooftop tent. If I do, and I'll get into that more at the end, but if I did buy a rooftop tent, I'd buy a used one for sure. Like, absolutely. There'd be no way that I would spend, you know, I mean, like Smitty built uh, Overlander, so the non-XLs used go for like 550 to 600 new like 850 to 1050 It just depends on where you find it and what the prices are at that moment. Um, and like most of the used ones, they're like used it three times, you know, like as long as there's no damage to it, right? Like I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's going to sit on top of my truck 365 days a year outside anyways. So as long as there's no damage, I'm cool. Um, it's funny you say that, Dylan. If only you could put your standard tent on the roof of your truck. I mean, that's basically what I did in my DIY rooftop tent, right? And that's what a lot of people do. And Patrick Remington just put up a new video where he essentially just took a really cheap, like, tent 
and built these three poles, you know, just like a rooftop tent, right? Like they all, they all have a hinge in the middle and they hinge out and there's like one in the middle and then one on each side um, that have like max extension points. And he just attached the tent on the inside of those poles. So you literally can, if you build a base and then a couple of poles to hold up your tent, that's what he literally just did it for like 500 bucks, 400 bucks, something like that. Um, all right, so let me, while you guys are talking there, you guys got a lot of good ideas. Let me continue running through the advantages of rooftop tents. Um, I would say the additional storage outside of the cab of your vehicle is huge for me. Like, again, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but just having all that stuff up on the roof, like the last time I went on that two day trip, I went on a two day, two night trip and I took tons of stuff and food and I took two bins with me too. And I filled up my truck with firewood for our fire pit. Um, and I could still see out the windows in the back in the past. There's no way, like I would have had at least a full bin, probably both those bins worth of space taken up by cot, sleeping bag, memory foam mats, pillow, like it's just all that stuff takes up so much room. And now to have it on the roof, that's amazing for me. Um, comfort, I would argue, like I've slept in my truck a few times. It's not bad. I'm a little too tall. I'm about 6'2". So like in the Xterra, I kind of have to bend my knees. Like I can't quite fit in it. Um, in my rooftop tent, it's seven feet long. So like I have, it's longer than my my mats are. Um, but so the, the only sort of downside to my tent is it has just like a small little backpacker opening, right? So you kind of have to climb up the ladder and then like, I look like an idiot. Like I like lay in the fetal position and like lay down inside the tent and like pull my legs up to my chest and like turn over and then like stretch my legs back out. So it's a little dumb looking, but once I'm in there, like it's pretty comfy. It's kind of like a, a nice little coffin is kind of the feel of my rooftop tent because it doesn't go so high. It only goes, my, my gas struts are 27 inches. So it's basically like, you know, like when I turn over this way, I hit my shoulder on the box. Um, so if you're, if you're claustrophobic, probably not the, not the ideal setup for you. Um, I would say too, so like rooftop tents to security safety from animals and bugs. So that's kind of the same thing with the convenience of being up on the roof, but bugs especially like i've been in hoosier national forest and one morning for some reason i woke up at like five o'clock and i kid you not i found an orange spider that was about like that big around like walking on the ground right outside my tent and then i found a centipede that was probably about that long just crawling around or millipede something i don't know i'm not a i'm not an entomologist but um those things climbing around right outside my tent and i was like holy shit like what if i'd left the zipper undone that much in the bottom you know like those things would have been in here with me um, at least up on the roof, like you don't get it as much, right? You get some flying bugs and stuff, but as long as you have a bug screen, you're fine. Um, another thing too, that I don't think people think about is when you're, especially my whole life, I've just been on the ground, right? I've been in a tent or I've been in a hammock when you're on the roof though, especially if you're at like a pretty scenic spot, like the view, right? Just to be able to wake up with all your windows open and stuff and to be able to look out and just see like everything. I think that's kind of like an underappreciated benefit of rooftop tents, if you're another seven, eight feet off the ground versus being down on the ground in a, in a regular tent or on a, in a hammock, it's kind of nice to wake up to that view. Um, all right, I'm gonna go back and catch up because I'm, I'm getting behind on you guys. I love the, the conversation. Thank you. Keep it up. Um, Omega-3 says, I would only pay two grand for a hard shell, never a soft shell. The Tapui is 1200 for the small. The quality is there, but if it's two people really tight, which is not good for couples. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you could easily spend 1500 to two grand on a soft shell and that's kind of, if you guys have watched any of my stuff before, like that's the reason I built my own DIY is because I wanted a hard shell tent. I wanted the sturdiness of it. I wanted the ease of opening and setting up and tearing down of it. Um, and I just, I, I liked that convenience of the gas struts and all that versus like, so I have some friends that have the Smitty belts and that was kind of, I just, initially anyways, I just eliminated them and I was like, <sighs> You got this vinyl cover and you got to take it off and you got to undo these straps. And you got to undo all this Velcro and then you got to throw it over the other side of your vehicle, which for me is where my awning is. So like, I'm going to have to, if I ever do a tent like that, I'd have to like basically put my awning out and then lay my vinyl cover over the awning just because of the way that it works, um, which is not ideal. Right. Um, so I was looking at hard top tents too, but like, again, they're like two grand plus for all of them. So if you can find a good deal on a used one, that might work. But otherwise, it's just tough, right? Um, Mauro says, the last time I went out and used a turbo tent four person, even though I sleep in the bed of my truck, so I use the tent as a shed, I moved all my crap in there for the day to go exploring. That's a good idea. Like, 
I, I am not by any means anti-tent, right? Like, I think there are a lot of pros to tents. Um, especially, like, I'm really impressed with the Gazelle's quality. I have I just randomly started following their page because they did a sticker giveaway. But every time their posts come up, I, like, I dive deeper into their stuff because their quality looks really good. The setup looks really good. Um, I think the price point is very fair. Like, a few hundred bucks is a lot for a tent, in my opinion. But, like, if the quality's there, then it, and you're going to keep it. Like, my Coleman tent was 50 bucks. But it lasted for maybe two years, like 10 or 12 trips, maybe. And, I mean, it literally fell apart. Like, I could not zip the thing anymore. That's that's what happened to it. So, you know, I like that idea, especially if you don't have a trailer or something and you need to throw something up and leave all your stuff in it. Tent's a great idea. Um, so good good point, Mauro. Um, Kurt says, I was hoping with all the rooftop tents on the market now and how popular they are, the prices would start to come down. Yeah, they're not. You're right, Kurt. Like, they are just, like, they are crazy high still. I almost feel like they're driving each other up. Like, it's the word overlanding. I think, I seriously think that's what it is. Um, all right, time to start looking on eBay and Craigslist, I guess. Yeah, but see, like, Dylan, like, the question, the question is quality, right? Like, that's my thing is I don't even want to spend 600 bucks on a tent that's going to fall apart in a year, you know? Like, maybe it saves me 300 bucks, but, like, with a rooftop tent, it's definitely, in my opinion, a, cry, a buy once, cry once kind of thing, right? Um, Kurt says, rooftop tent with wife and kids, not a lot of fun. That's a good point. Like... Again, my tent, my rooftop tent is literally one person. I, I actually, I got my seven-year-old in it once and I put him all the way down at the foot of the bed with his head facing the other direction up against the wooden back of it. And like I was pushed up against the front of it and it was, it worked okay, but like that was, it barely worked okay for that. So, I mean, I built mine with the intention of only ever using it for myself, which is fine, right? But you're right. If, if you can get the wife and kids to go, like my kind of plan with the DIY rooftop tent was, okay, you guys sleep in the big tent. We have a big like six person tent. So they could all comfortably sleep in there. Um, and for, I mean, you know, if I go 15 times a year, they go two. So for me, that made sense. But you're definitely right. If you bought a rooftop tent for everybody, it would be a little bit dicey. I think even if I bought a bigger rooftop tent, it'd just be me and the wife. And then the kids would have like a pup tent on the ground and they'd be fine with that. Um, Keith says, mine's Overland Vehicle Systems. I feel like I've seen them before. Build finally, moving again, was a backdoor on Leaf Springs. Oh, your trailer, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll review when I get it in. Okay, can't wait to hear from that. Mauro says, yeah, I'm six foot, so I just fit behind the driver's seat in the Xterra. Yeah, the, again, if you watch my video on Tuesday and you see me like backing the truck in, I realized I look like a giant. Like I realized I look like I'm like this on the Xterra. Like, I have the seat all the way down and all the way back, and I barely fit in that thing. So you're right. It's pretty tough. Um, St. Louis Arch says, OVS is akin to Tapui and build quality according to reviews and hundreds of dollars less. That's good to know. I haven't heard of that. I'll go check it out. Because Tapui, I've seen some Tapuis recently, especially some, like, used re locally that were, like, seven, six to 900 bucks. And I was like, I need to do more research on those because I've heard good things about the Saint, the Smitty Belt. I know a few people that, that own those, so I feel good about those, but I don't know a ton about Tapui. I think the, the quality is good, though. Um, and then St. Louis Arch says, I got the Annex, too. That's, that kind of seems like the way to go. Like, especially, I'm a big winter camper, so like I kind of like the idea of having the Annex and setting up a heater inside of the Annex and letting the air just kind of like rise up into the tent. So that I, hopefully it, it eliminates some of the, the condensation, but still keeps some of the heat. That was kind of my thought. I don't know if that would work or not, but um, Mauro says, yeah, good call for the view. Dylan says, you still need a trailer. <laughs> yes, Dylan. Send me, tip me $3,000 in the chat and I will buy one tomorrow. <laughs> it's never not going to happen. Um, Kurt says, I bought a Kingdom 8 tent with a garage annex for the Camly, fam, for the Camly famping trips. The beer is kicking in, people. The family camping trips. You could fit a Nissan Juke inside of it. Well, that's what I want. I want to, the family can sleep outside, but I want to park the Juke that I don't own inside of the tent. Um, Dylan says, dang. Kurt says, it's definitely the glamping 10 day camping trip type setup. How tall are you? Bingo. What brand are those super low profile hard shell RTTs? Okay, I'm going to let someone else answer that because I don't know. Um, so back to my my points here. We'll finish up advantages of a rooftop tent. Um, the view was one. Um, I was going to say with the added like, have any of you guys that have rooftop tents use the like interior like liner, like the walls? Because again, like I go probably like 70% of my trips are in the winter. 
So I do definitely want one that I can like insulate and stay warm in. Um, so I'm just curious, like if those things work, I I've heard that they do, but I'd trust you guys more than a random thing I heard on the internet. Um, I also think that like with purchased rooftop tents, like unless you get a super tiny one, like there's actually quite a bit of room in there, right? Like those three persons, like the regular old Smitty built. Um, so when Mo Leisure's, uh, X Ventures met up with me on that two day trip that I did a couple weeks ago, they have a Smitty built. I think there might be an XL though. I don't know. Um, but they have a Smitty built and I was really impressed. Like that thing looks like as big as my bed at home. And I was like, I'm climbing into a coffin here guys. And like everything hangs down around my face like this. And, uh, and then I looked at their tent and I was like, dude, you could like play board games up in there and stuff. Like it looked pretty sweet and pretty roomy. Um, and again, like comfort. I just think that rooftop tents seem more comfortable because they've got the built-in pads and stuff. Now I've heard that some of them aren't so comfortable and you kind of need to replace them with like some sort of an aftermarket memory foam or something like that. And I totally get that. Um, but I still just think versus like a tent with like some sort of an air mattress or something that requires a lot more packing and room inside your rig and, you know, stuff like that. I just kind of feel like the built-in comfort of a rooftop tent is pretty sweet. So, but I think that's arguable. I think you guys might say different things. Um, so let me, before I move on to, to downsides, let's catch up with the comments here. What brand are those? Dylan says you can only do up to 500 bucks. St. Louis Arch says I have thoughts for winter camping, a mini cast iron stove and putting a silicone piece to run a chimney. Yeah, I, I'd be totally down for that. I love the idea of having some sort of a stove or something, especially if it's like wood burning, because then I could stay out there for a week and not have to worry about fuel or anything like that. Like in my last two day trip, I burned through almost a whole one of those gallon propane tanks just because I did a lot of cooking. And I was like, this is annoying. Like, I do not want to keep buying these one pound things. I'm gonna, I've got an adapter for a 20 pound tank um, that can plug into it then. So that's probably what I'll do next time. Or I'd really like to buy a five gallon uh, smaller tank and permanently mount it somewhere on the rig. I just don't know where, where I have room for it. Um, but something like that would last me five times longer, right? And I wouldn't have to switch them out all the time. Um... Tapui has a clip-in quilted liner that works on any brand. That's I feel like I've seen that. That's the one I think I've seen. Um, Falcon and GFC are the low-profile ones, it looks like, and they are like 3 to 5K. So, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Those, those super nice, like, rooftop tents that are hard shell are so freaking expensive. Like, my truck four years ago was $7,000. I don't want to spend $5,000 on a rooftop tent. Like that just makes zero sense for me. Even if it's, if I had a guarantee it would last for 20 years, like something's going to change. My needs are going to change. Something's going to change. Like more than like 1500 to 2000 to me just doesn't even make sense in my opinion for me. Right. Again, not to throw shade at anybody, but just in my opinion, um, St. Louis Arch says mine has a three inch memory foam. I kept material from a two inch topper. It'll roll to nearly no space would give five inches total. So see, that's cool. Like, I, so I right now am sitting on a two inch piece of memory foam that was a full size that I cut in half. So it's 27 inches wide and like six and a half feet long, six feet long, something like that. Um, but so I doubled it up. So I'm at four inches, but it's still a wooden box, right? Like I'm still sleeping in a wooden box on two slabs of memory foam. So like I definitely, and I'm more of a side sleeper. So like I will wake up four or five, six times in a night, I, like just subconsciously, like not like wide awake, but I'll wake up and I'll realize that I'm uncomfortable. It's because I'm just like my shoulder and my hip is like laying on the wood and I roll to the other side and I fall right back asleep. And so again, I'm not complaining. Like I sleep way better than I did on a cot in the tent. I The only thing that may have been a better sleep is a hammock. If you get the hammock set up right, because there have been some nights where I wake up and I'm like that and that's not great. Um, so, but if you have the distance between the trees and you can get your stuff right and get it set up right, then the hammock may be the only thing that's more comfortable. Um, but really overall, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I really sleep pretty well on this thing, which makes me think, man, if I had like a really fancy one, even like a Smitty built, like by really fancy, I just mean one that I didn't build myself out of wood. Um, like I might sleep like a baby and that would be the most amazing thing ever. Cause I love to go camping, but I don't love drinking a few beers and <laughs> thanks Kurt appreciate the two bucks man um, but I don't like having to like pull my legs up and like turn to the side to get out of the tent in the middle of the night when I have to pee um, 
So let me catch up on the comments and we'll dive into negative stuff. So for the winter, my solution is two seat warmers. Yep, underneath my Helinox Ultralight Cot, which just fits in the back of the exterior. Those things are rad. The Helinox, Helinox Cots are sweet because they're like uh, the they're like the folding chairs, right? Like they all fold into like an umbrella, like thicker, obviously, but like kind of like they fold up like an umbrella. I am cheap, so I have a Coleman Cot that was forty dollars. And you have to put these god-awful bars in the end and you crack your fingers on them every time that you're doing it. And it, it, you have to unfold the whole thing. It's, I pretty much hurt my hands every single time I went camping with that thing and I hated it. Um, but those Helinox ones are like, they just kind of like, whoop, you just like open them up and they're awesome. But I agree with the seat warmers thing. Um, and then just fits under the Xterra, plugged into a Jackery 240. Oh, so you have like, oh, you're talking seat warmers like for a car. I bought one of those. The ones that I talked about a while ago, they were like 15 bucks. I have that new in the box and that is my plan. So with that new battery pack that I got, I'm kind of thinking I may power that off of it and see how long I can get at night um, in the winter, right? Because then I won't have to like power a fridge or anything. Now, I don't have a fridge, but I would like to get one at some point. Um, but like, yeah, I love that idea. So that's, I have a plan for that. I'm going to try and, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to test it and I'm going to post like a video about how I set mine up. Um, but that's a great idea. Right now I'm using, and actually I can see them, they're sitting over there on the floor. Right now I'm using the battery, like basically like battery pack hand warmers and like throwing two or three of those in my in my sleeping bag. Like, and but then if you move around a lot, like that doesn't work as well, but it's still better than nothing, right? Um, so yeah, but that's a great idea with those, those big long seat warmers, like a leather seat warmer kind of a deal. Um, Dylan says, what is your dream rig? Are you talking to someone else or are you talking to me? Um, St. Louis Arch says another option for winter is a 12 volt electric blanket. Yep. But they are power drains, man. Like, I don't know. You guys tell me, but those things seem to take a ton of power. Like, I think you'd churn through a 300 amp hour or watt hour battery in a, like two or three hours. You know, that's my only concern. But I've heard of people running them. Like, maybe if you had a dual battery set up with big deep cycles, like that might work. Um, Morrow says sleeping in a wooden box, AKA a coffin. Yes. That's exactly what it feels like. Like I've woken up a couple times and been like, Oh, what the, oh, okay. I'm in the tent. Um, again, thanks Kurt for the money. <laughs> Appreciate it, buddy. Um, St. Louis Arch says Patriot campers is my dream rig. Aussie made very spendy, but made for multi-week trips in the outback. That's cool. Are Helinox cots, big man certified. Oh damn. They're like $300 store. Yeah. Helinox stuff is expensive. So I've looked at Helinox chairs and like they have some that are almost exactly like my Marchway. My Marchway was like 35 bucks. The one that is literally exactly the same as that from Helinox is like 70 bucks. And then they have the high back chairs from Helinox, which are again, they're awesome. They're kind of a buy once, cry once kind of a thing. Um, but their high back chairs are like 120 bucks. And I was just like, man, I could buy like four of these Marchways for that. Um, so that's, it just gets tough, man. But again, if you're going to buy them once and they're going to last forever, like, might be worth worth it. I mean, Morrow's point is a good one. They're backpacker light, um, so if you you know if you have to go pretty far, then that's good for that. Um, Kurt says, speaking of fridges, I found an awesome brand this week called Iceco. Yeah, I've heard of Iceco. There's I've heard really good things about them. Oh, Dylan says I'm talking about you. Okay, I'll tell you what my dream rig is. Um, St. Louis Arch, run run it for an hour as you fall asleep. Then when you wake up, yeah, exactly. That's the fridge thing. I was very concerned that like I would have to have like a 500 or a 1,000 watt hour amp hour uh, battery to run a fridge, but you really only have to run it for like seven, eight hours. I mean, if that, I mean, six or eight hours would be plenty, right? Like you could start it at like 10 o'clock or you could run it during the day off that thing and then charge it off your car battery at night, like charge back up my battery pack and just sort of let the cold stay in. As long as you don't open it up a bunch during the night, I think you'd be fine. Um, so my dream rig... I don't know if I have a dream rig. Like, I mean, I have a bunch of them that I really like. Like, I love old patrols, for sure. Um, I honestly, and it's just silly, and I've mentioned this a million times, but, like, if I had, like, some crazy, like, if Infinity or, like, some, like, manufacturer would be like, hey, Fletch, we want to work with you. If you buy the truck, we'll build it out for you, like Grant Scott with his Tacoma now, the Arkansas off-road dude. Um, has a company that wants to build all kinds of stuff out for Tacomas and they're like helping him out and like using his truck as a guinea pig. I would love to have, and I'm not kidding, like the very first or second year of the QX80 or even like the last or second to last year of the Infiniti QX56. So you get the 5.6 liter, it's like 370 horsepower V8 motor. Um, you get all the Titan underpinnings and stuff with it. 
it's a sexy truck. I just think it's cool. Like, I want to go to, if I go to an Overland Expo, I don't want to be the guy that pulls up in the exact same thing as everybody else. Like, I want to, like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I had, like, a bad childhood. I don't think so. My parents love me. I love them. Like, there's nothing bad about what happened to me as a kid. But, like, I just have this desire to be, like, super rebellious, I guess. I don't know. Like, I just, I don't like, I modify literally every vehicle that I've ever bought. Like, I cannot have one that is the same as anyone else's, or it drives me crazy. Um, so, like, I just love the idea, like, no one is building QX80s. No one's building QX56s. Like, there are no Overland Infiniti V8 large SUVs. And I like the, the extra space. Now, you do have to contend with, the thing that worries me a little bit about that idea is, like, the places I've been able to take my Xterra, there's... I really worry that the QX80 would not be able to get to those places. Like, I have a buddy with a QX80 that went camping with me like a month ago. And watching him try and trundle that thing up into the campsite through some just some muddy ruts and stuff was like watching an elephant try and fit into a closet. You know, like it was just so I don't know. But like, again, it would be such an eye catcher and it would be so cool. And like, let's be real here. Right. Like, as I've said, like, I'm a real just normal dude. So like, even if I'm lucky, I might go on 15, 20 trips a year. So there's 365 days, right? So like, even if I'm extremely lucky, I might spend a month, month and a half, like actually overlanding. And the rest of the time, it's a truck, right? So like going to expos, going to like meetups, driving it around town and stuff. I just think it'd be so fun to have something completely just bonkers like that, that no one else has. So hopefully that answers your question. Um... Can you mount the turbo toilet to the rooftop tent? You know, I haven't thought about the turbo toilet, but I did watch a video that this guy did earlier with, they make like, uh, like crank up roof fans kind of thing for like RVs and stuff, but like they can close up and seal up, but you can open it up and then it's got like a built in like battery pack and you can, or you can run it off like, an, like my battery pack that I just bought and it has a fan and it circulates the air. And this guy was like, dude, this thing circulates so much air that when I close my doors, it like makes a whining noise and it's like sucking the air out of the vehicle. And I was like, that would be cool. It would make it feel a lot less like a, a coffin, you know? And like, especially in the summer, that would be really, really nice. Like that might make me go camping more in the summer. But I mean, again, honestly, I mostly go in the winter anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, for a fridge, again, I can't lift more than 40 pounds. Okay, I use a 22 quart Alpacool. How long have you had the Alpacool? Morrow says, but Isco seems slightly superior to pass through for a tie down, for instance. MYOG for the win. Make your own gear. Yeah, good point. Kurt says, Fletch, I'm definitely glad you don't rock a Tacoma or a Furrow Runner or a Jeep. Love them, but good lord, I'm just bored of watching them. I know, they're very aggressive. Like, they're, they're really good looking trucks, but, and I think that they're really great trucks, but I just, I gotta represent Nissan, man. Like, I've had so much good luck with Nissans. And I feel like they're overlooked all the time. Like, so I mean, because I've had like eight or nine Nissans now and I've had such good luck with them. Like, I love showing up to like the off-road park with 18 Forerunners and 12 FJ Cruisers and 17 Jeep JKUs and like me. <laughs> like, I just love getting there and then them all looking and being like, oh God, it's an XTR guy. And then you like go and you climb up the same stuff and they're like, oh, you got lockers? I'm like, no. I have an SE. I have nine speakers. Like, I don't have any lockers. And it just, they're just great trucks, man. So, yeah, I'll, I'll always be Nissan. Like, I literally really hope someday that Nissan sees me and goes, hey, Fletch, we love that you love Nissans and here's something. Right? Like, even if it's just like a patch or a sticker or something, like, that would, that would like make my life if Nissan was like, oh, we appreciate your, your kindness. And like, my parents have literally leased probably, they lease cars every three years and they've, I've had Nissans for like the last 15 years. So they have probably both had five Nissans on their own. And then I've also talked to a bunch of other people into Nissans too, because they look at the prices versus the Toyotas, right? And there's no comparison. So um, thanks Moro, thanks Kurt. Glad you don't rock the normal stuff. Jim says, I'm an old guy with a prostate the size of a grapefruit. Not sure I'd want to climb out of a rooftop tent. I know, see like that's, I have a pretty good bladder. <laughs> um, like, I have a pretty good bladder. And I know you guys want to know that. But I still drink a decent amount of beers, right? So, like, uh, so like I, uh, 
I, uh, <laughs> Will is, is texting me. Hi, Will. I, I assume you're watching this. Um, I have a pretty good bladder, but like still with the rooftop tent, especially with mine being like a coffin with a tiny, small little opening to climb out of. Like I woke up at three in the morning the last trip I went on and I turned on my light so I could see. And as soon as I did that, like the screen is right here by my head and bugs just went. Brrr. And I was like, crap. Okay. Well, I really have to pee. And I was like, but if I turn my light on, I'm going to let 7,000 mosquitoes into the tent with me. So I turn the light off. So then I'm like fumbling around in the dark trying to find the zippers. And I'm like shaking the, the, the you know, the thing out, the, the bug net out to try and get the bugs away. And then I'm like waiting like a minute. And I'm like, God, I'm going to pee my pants. And I'm trying to unzip this thing in the dark. And then I'm stum like trying to find my shoes. And then I'm climbing down the stupid ladder. And I got like two steps down. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to pee off the ladder. So I just stood up there on top of the ladder and I peed down off the truck. Climbed back up, took my shoes off, climbed in in the dark, fumbled around, found the zippers, closed it, turned the light back on. I was like, I got to zip my pants up. Like, I couldn't even see anything. Like, it was not ideal. It was just not great. It was not a great experience. Um, so I'm with you, Jim, man. It's not. That's the real downside, right? So what it really makes me think is it's probably not healthy for me to drink that many beers anyways. And I could probably be more responsible. I don't know if that'll change anything or not. Like, at one point, one will outweigh the other, right? The convenience of... The rooftop tent versus having to pee. Um, but I'm with you. Kurt says, don't climb down, just pee off the roof. See, that's, yep, that's exactly what I did. Um, so yeah, the the Alpacools, tell me about the Alpacool and the luck you've had. Because I've literally, I've bought two Alpacools. I bought them from Amazon. I've gotten them. I set them up in my rig. I plugged them in. And like, I don't have a deep cycle battery. So like, they cut off in like an hour. In like an hour, they shut off. And I was like, again, I'm running it off of a normal battery, so I get that. That's my fault. Um, that's why I think my I have to go with like some sort of a 500 or 1,000 watt hour uh, battery, right? Like I just think that I have to do that because otherwise it's going to shut off in an hour and all my food's going to go bad, and I'm going to wake up the next morning for breakfast and everything's going to be you know thawed out and gross. Um, so yeah, so tell me about the Alpacools though, because so I'm really interested in them. And again, I've owned a couple of them for like two or three days and then returned them. But my the thing that I that kind of turned me off on them and scared me was one power usage and two quality. So I heard a lot of things that were like, eh, the the latches break. And I'm like, dude, if the latch breaks, that's a game changer for me. Like, even if it is 300 bucks versus 500 bucks or something, if I run it on three trips and it breaks, that doesn't do me any good. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the Alpacool like long term. Um, Dylan says if I had an F550 it would be different St. Louis Arch says use a Gatorade bottle to Jim Jim says wide mouth bottle apparently we're talking about girth now I don't know Graham says is 15,000 too much for a 2011 Xterra with 40,000 miles oh, that's a good question I don't know I'm not I'm not so up to <laughs> I'll get to you in a second Will I, I'm, I'm not so up on the newer prices. So, I mean, for reference, Graham, I'll tell you, mine's an 05, and it had 94,000 miles on it, and I bought it four years ago. So in 2016, so it was 11 years old when I bought it, and I spent seven. So, I mean, that, that doesn't seem unreasonable to me to get, you know, what, six years newer with, you know, four tenths. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about math. Two-fifths of... Uh, of the miles like that doesn't seem terrible to me you can always negotiate right will says he wants to know more about my bladder my bladder is amazing like will if you ever get out this way or i get out your way like we'll go camping and you'll see i can drink a good like five six beers before i have to pee it's impressive people have been impressed um moro says pee bottle urinal for the win kurt says graham probably need more details mileage trim levels etc sorry you said mileage that's low miles but it seems high unless it's four-wheel drive yeah, I'd be curious about the trim too. If it's an off-road, that doesn't seem terrible. 40,000 miles. Dylan says, come on, everyone like this video. Thank you, Dylan. Do you work for me? Do you want to be a, a moderator on this chat? I would love that. Um, Jim says, responsible overlander isn't that an oxymoron. I don't know. I mean, like, we're all, like, trying to be responsible and pick up after ourselves and stuff, right? Dylan says a trailer would make it easier. Yes, I know. Dylan, if I had that kind of money, I'd buy like a fancy rooftop tent. Um, actually, no, I'd rather have a trailer, to be honest with you. Um, the difference is the Jackery has a regulated power supply. I run the Apple Cool from the Jackery 240. How long does that go? How long does your Apple Cool go? I mean, that's a smaller Apple Cool, but still, on the 240, I'm kind of surprised by that because that seems small. Um, 
and it also powers the seat warmer. So when you're doing the seat warmers too, are you running both at the same time? Probably not, because it's winter if you're using the seat warmers. Kurt says, where's a good area in Kentucky, West Virginia, we should do an overlanding meetup and all things overlanding meetup. Yeah. I'm telling you, West Virginia was awesome, man, but it's 10 hours away from me. Kentucky, I'd totally be down for. I'd like to do the Daniel Boone backcountry byway here before too long. So if people are near there or want to go there, I'm, I'll am i let you know when and we can meet up. Uh, Morrow says, if I had to do it all over again, I'd go Ice Co over Alpacool. Yeah, I mean, the Ice Co stuff, I've heard really good things about. I've heard a lot of people say that they're really nice. Um, Graham says he lives in Hawaii. Things are tough. Yeah, I mean, you probably don't have much to choose from. So just go in hardball, you know? Go in and tell them you'll do 13.5 out the door or something if it's a dealership and just see what they say. Mahalo. Howdy, Graham. Good to have you from Hawaii. Like, we're all super jealous of you, I'm sure. Um, I got an Apple Cool 36 quart. We'll review on usage and quality. Tested it at home. Cool's great. I bought the three year warranty. That's a good idea if you can buy a warranty. Dylan says, I don't work for you, but I wouldn't mind it. Okay. <laughs> good to know. When I get enough money to where I can pay you, then we'll talk about it. Moral says, yes. Jim says, build a trailer. I, you know, yeah. All right, we're way off topic now, guys. I'm going to go back to what I was talking about, which is rooftop tents. But yes, trailers would be awesome. You're right. Um, so let's talk downsides to rooftop tents and bring this thing back on topic, for, especially for the people that are like watching this after the fact. And they're like, I thought we were talking about tents, guys. Um, so we've already talked about a few of these, but so we can kind of hustle through these. Downsides to rooftop tents cost, right? Definitely. They're expensive. Slower to set up than a lot of instant up tents. So like, again, if you have a gazelle or something like that, what, a minute, minute and a half, two minutes maybe to set those things up. But I watched, so I watched the Moleisure folks set up their, their Smitty Belt. And it's, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sound super lazy or like whiny about it at all. But, you know, they have what, like three or four different awnings that they have to set up. They've got poles that go out to all of those. You got to undo the vinyl, the two buckles. You got to undo the Velcro. You got to take the vinyl cover off the thing. You got to be thoughtful of if you have an awning on the other side that that's out before you take that thing apart. Um, you got to get the poles out. You got to get the shoe bag out. You got to pop up all the things. You got to unzip all the stuff. You got to, you know, put anything else up there that you need because you can only keep so much stuff in like a pre-made, especially those vinyl wrap tents, right? Um, so while they're not slow, um, like what they told me was if it's pouring down rain, they could get it up in about three or four minutes. If it's like they're just taking their time like five to eight minutes, which is, I mean, that's not terrible, right? But it is definitely different than what I built, which is why I built what I built. Um, I feel like there's a great variance in cost between like the vinyl covered ones and the hard shells. And that's kind of sucks because I really would like a hard shell pre-made rooftop tent, I think. Um, another downside is you have to really think about your overall setup, right? So some of them have certain like sides that it opens on it's so like for an exterior you can't really have like a rear open one i mean you can but then you're gonna have to close that hatch so like for me all my cooking stuff comes out on slides in the back so if i want to get up in the tent for some reason and i have all my cooking stuff out like i literally can't or i have to climb up on a wheel and like pull myself up into the thing which is less than ideal um and then storage if you don't rock one of those full time like if you're the type that has like a pulley system or something that's just another thing right like you have to think of those steps and think of like where to put it where to store it how to store it you have to buy stuff to build a pulley system or something or you know get some boards and like slide the thing down off of it um for me it will always just be on the tent so or on the truck so that's not a big deal um and then to that point exactly though, if you keep it on your rig all the time, then you're gonna lose MPG, you're gonna have extra weight up top when you're off-roading and stuff. Like there's there's some cons of that for sure. Um, and then like going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, we've already talked about, but I had that down too. And then having to level the vehicle. Now I've never messed with that a whole lot. I mean, I'm in Indiana, so it's not like I'm on like rocks or anything mountainous or anything like that, but like I have heard from people that you have to, there's sometimes you have to do a lot of work to, to level the rooftop tent or, you know, in my case, I don't mind so much as long as I'm leaning towards the wooden side. So I'm not going to fall out of the thing. It's, it's kind of okay. But so that's what I had for downsides. Um, so yeah, St. Louis Arch says higher center of gravity. Yeah, I can definitely feel it. Like it's, I pick up a lot more wind on the highway, um, in off-roading situations, like even just like driving it around town when I take roundabouts and stuff, like I used to just toss the truck in and I have no sway bars. I used to just toss the truck in corners and stuff and just, it would lean, but you knew the max, right? Now there've been a couple times where I'll hit that roundabout and throw it in and I'm like, oh God, we're lifting tires. Like the front left tire is pulling up a little bit and I have to slow down and look like an idiot. Like I'm pushing my truck or like tires squeal. The MTs do not like corners. Uh, so that is definitely a downsize, a downside. Um, 
Moro says, I guess I should do some sort of write-up about my Jackery Apple Cool. Yeah, DM me about it. That'd be awesome. I'd love to hear about it. Because that's, I literally I bought a battery pack now. So my next step is either RTT or uh, or a fridge. Like, I really want a fridge just because I'm tired of the ice. And I'm tired of, I would like to have it permanently, right? Will says, check out the Rubicon EXP hitch tent mount. Allows camp day trip mobility. I'll check that out. What is Rubicon EXP? I'm going to Google it right now. EXP. Hitch tent mount. Hitch tent mount. Okay, let's look at this thing. Rubicon Expedition products. Okay. Hitch tent, a new platform for adventure. Oh, yeah, I do feel like I've seen that. They've been at some shows and stuff recently, haven't they? Like, I feel like I saw a video of them at, like, an expo talking about this thing. So for you guys that can't see this, let me pop this up here quick. Check this thing out. So it's like, and doesn't it reside on like your hitch when you're not using it? I mean, I do like, cause it's the same idea, right? It gets you up off the ground. It has a little ladder and stuff. That is pretty sweet. More detail. That is pretty cool. It's not cheap though, Will. 1200 bucks. Not cheap, but I mean, it is pretty sweet. I mean, it's basically a rooftop tent, right? So what's the downside? Um, <laughs> build a trailer. <laughs> okay, guys, I get it. I need a trailer. I got it. Um, check out that. Fletch, do you like doing more low speed technical overlanding or higher speed? I'm not really high speed at all. Like the Xterra, if I wanted to do like desert run stuff, which I don't have deserts because I'm in Indiana, um, like that, that just to me seems really cost prohibitive to do like all the, you know, remote reservoir stuff and all that. Like, I, I think I like like the rocky hill climb type stuff if I had to pick one. Um, Will says he's been using that for a while. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, it looks awesome. Will. Graham says lived in Hawaii is sick, but we don't get to go overlanding like you guys. Mahalo for answering my questions for the content. Yeah, man. No problem, Graham. I'm glad to have people from all over. You're loaded. Quit whining. Thanks, Will. Appreciate it. It's one of my sponsors, guys. <laughs> if by loaded you mean drunk, no, I'm just kidding. I've only had like two beers. I'm not drunk. Um, I wish I was loaded. Will, you know that I have two kids, right? I drive a 16-year-old vehicle. You know I'm not loaded. Uh, Moral says 1,200 is halfway to a trailer. Yeah, no, you're right. That's. I think you're right. Um, I know you're not high speed. Oh, you're talking about your ring. Yeah. The rig, oh, I'm, I know you're not high speed. I'm talking about the rig. I'm, I'm talking about the rig too. Like, yeah, the rig is, the rig is not outfitted. It clunks and stuff leaving my driveway. So I don't think I want to go on anything fast. Things might fall off and that's scary. So let's wrap this up. We're over an hour. We, last time we, we fell short of the hour. This time we're like extended over it. Um, so again, kind of the reason that I brought this up, right, is, so I've built my own DIY rooftop tent and I love it. I love the idea of the rooftop tent. I love being up high. I love the convenience of it. I love the setup. The things that have been kind of cons for me is getting in and out of it because of the nature of my DIY rooftop tent. Um, the room inside of it, right? So again, like we've talked about, like not being able to even throw a kid or two in there with me, is kind of annoying because then I still have to bring all the stuff to set up a tent for them, right? So, um, so I feel like they're I like I love the idea of a rooftop tent. I'm a rooftop tent guy now, but I'm I might be thinking about buying one. I don't know. Like, what are your thoughts? Like, or I mean, another alternative would be that I could build another one. Like from the stuff that I've learned, I could build very similar to what I've built already, but instead of opening like this, maybe it opens long ways, and then that gives me a lot more room inside of it to like sit up and have more space and things like that. Maybe I build it a little bit wider because mine sits. Mine actually sits. If you're familiar with Xterra's inside of the cross rail. So mine's 100% on the cross members and not on the, the rails themselves. Um, so like maybe that's the solution. Maybe I build another DIY one, but I, you know, now that I, I just take the things that I've learned and I build a better one. Um, but it is kind of tempting like to look at like a used Smitty bill for like 500, 550 and just be like, man, out of the box, 500 bucks. And I just have a tent and I strap it to the roof and, it's got room for three people instead of a coffin, you know, it's easier to get in and out of. It would actually like, I do worry in like a rainstorm, like if it ever stormed, I'm probably going to have to sleep in the truck. Like the, I would probably honestly have to like close up the rooftop tent and latch it down. Like when it's closed, it's totally sealed and it's great. 
It's been sitting out in my driveway for, you know, months now. No water gets in. Um, Dylan and I live in Indy, like northeast side of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, but like, you know, when it's open, if it started to pour down rain, like I've seen people post videos. Grant Wilbanks, uh, Arkansas Offroad, did a video where they went on a, like a three-day trip and they got washed out with a thunderstorm one night. And I was like, there's no way that my tent would survive that. Like, there's no way. I would have had to like been like, well, I guess I'm not sleeping tonight. Close the thing up just to salvage it, lock it down and like sleep in my driver's seat, which would not be ideal. Like, that's not great. Um, all right. Maro says, Terrapod has been developing something that they're posting regularly on their Facebook. So good idea, Bank. Okay, I'll check that out. That's cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, I'm like this close to like starting to think about maybe just buying a used Smitty belt and giving that a shot. I mean, here's the thing too is resale prices on them are cheap. So if I can just be like hold out and find one for like 500 bucks, I could use it for like a year and probably sell it for like 450 to 550. You know, like there's not really a lot of risk. Kurt says, dude, Terrapod looks off awesomely slim. An Alibaba group buy, find 10 guys, 350 each. <laughs> I mean, Jim, we could try it. You know, if you go to the Facebook page or something and post up a link, like we might be able to find 10 people. I don't know. So anyway, so that was kind of my thought on the rooftop tent thing. I love the rooftop tent. There are a lot of conveniences to it. I've been really, really happy with mine. Um, I will probably like, honestly, unless I just found a steal of a deal on like a used Smitty build or something here soon. Um, I will probably rock mine for at least like the next year, get out to, you know, core with it, get out to uh, more expo next year with it and just kind of show it off and, and get feedback from people and see what's out there. Um, again, unless there's just some like crazy steal of a deal, but now I'm like hooked. Like I love the rooftop tent life, but now that I've seen other people with them, I'm like, man, 500 bucks is not that much. You know, like 500 bucks is not that much to have like a really nice sleeping experience. <laughs> Kurt, you guys are out of control. Oh, so before we finish up though, I did have one sort of awesome announcement. The patches are in. So we've got patches. I've got a box of them sitting here beside me now. Look at that. Ooh. Um, they are also up on the website for sale right now. However, if you order them, I will probably wait till like early to middle of next week before I ship them. So I did some test shipments, like I shipped one or two of them out to people um, just to make sure they'd get through the mail because they are fairly thick. Like I don't know if you can see this very well. They're like probably like a third of an inch thick, half of an inch thick almost. Um, so I, I was trying to ship them in envelopes like I do the stickers, but I'm just not sure. Like, I don't know if they'll go through a machine and I don't know if they're going to get kicked back to me. So I didn't want a bunch of you guys to order these things and then to ship them to you guys and have 15 of them come back. <laughs> so if you order them, that's totally fine. Feel free. I personally, I think they came out really well. I, I'm really happy with them. Um, I've got one up in the headliner of my truck now, which is the picture on the website. Um, but their new logo, they're just sick. They're Velcro back. They're about three and a half inches long, about two inches tall. Um... So they are available right now. But again, if you order, just know that I'm probably going to hold on to them until like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, just to make sure that they get to you. So <laughs> Maro says, obligatory patches. We don't need no stinking patches coming. Except we're all overlanders. So I know that's not true. I know that's not true. We all need patches. There's no such thing as too many patches. It is not a tactical spork. It's one of those beaver uh, shovels was the idea. That's an overlander, like stalwart, like just thing that you see everywhere. That was my idea. I don't even own a beaver shovel, but crazy beaver shovel, shovel, I think they're called. Cause they're like a hundred dollars. <laughs> they're like a hundred dollars. I didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on them. Um, but I do have a tactical spork. I have several tactical sports sporks, but I just thought that was like a very cool, like overlander ish thing. And I liked how it split the logo, gave me a spot to put established in 2016 on there, which I thought was cool. Um, yeah, man, Jeremiah, send message me. I'll trade you one. Um, so yeah, so they're out now. They're on the website. Again, feel free to order. I will. You'll see like actual posts about them next week, probably. But I just want to make sure that they go through. Uh, the lifestyle overland family has patches. Yes, um, I wanted to make sure they went through the mail because again, I did not want to like mail these out to all you guys and have a bunch of problems with them through the postal service. So. Um, feel free to order them through the website or send me a message. I mean, whatever's easiest for you guys. It doesn't matter. 
Yeah, patches give you twice as many horsepower versus stickers. I have stickers too, though. So if you do both, 15 horsepower. What if you did six stickers and like three patches? I mean, it's way cheaper than a supercharger, you know? <laughs> Kidding. Don't do that. That's not true. I, I don't endorse that message. All right, guys, we've, we've made it over an hour. It's 10.10, my time. Um, so thank you guys. Thank you everybody for, for stopping by, for hanging out. Um, again, I'm still looking for, I've had a couple people reach out about the featured rigs. Um, so if anybody wants to do that, like just shoot me a message. I'd love to feature some of you guys on there. Um, look for the official post on the patches next week. Again, if you want to go to allthingsoverlanding.com and order them now, you totally can. And I will get them all packaged up and ready for you. And I'll just make sure that those test shipments go through and then I'll get them out to you. Um, but thanks everybody. There was a ton of people on here tonight. We had Hawaii and Texas and all over the place. <laughs> Missed that live. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremiah. So yeah, so thanks to everybody. I mean, I love it. We had so many people tonight. It was great. So I appreciate you guys all coming by. I appreciate you hanging out. I appreciate your support really legitimately. Will, you know, last US bags. That's who Will is. So thank you, Will, for for you know, working with me and thanks for coming and hanging out and watching the show. And uh, thanks to all you guys. So again, as always, you know, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to help out. Um, yeah, Orlando Pioneer says getting excited for core. It's like so close. It's like three months away. I'm super excited. Three more. <laughs> Dylan is getting a job offer after this. All right. See you, Kurt. Three more likes, says Dylan. Sleep well, bud, Will. Thanks, Will. I appreciate you stopping by. Good night. St. Louis Arch. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, hit me up if you have any questions or anything. It's fun hanging out with you guys. Good seeing you, Jim. 